Okay, next up we have QX Resources, ASX code QXR, and they have a market cap of around 24 million. QX Resources is focused on exploration and development of battery minerals with hard rock lithium assets in a prime location of WA, a lithium brine project in the USA, copper molly gold assets in Queensland, and a strategic investment in nickel sulfides in Sweden. We welcome back QX Resources Managing Director, Steve Prominence. Steve, welcome back, my friend. Hello, and uh, thank you very much for your time to talk about QX Resources. We're focused on battery minerals, and what I'm going to be talking about today is lithium. Uh, lithium brines, and to a lesser extent, uh, lithium hard rock. QX Resources has a portfolio of uh, battery minerals, which also includes an investment in a private nickel company, together with uh, copper gold assets. But as I mentioned, I'm going to be focusing on lithium. Now, this presentation is publicly available, uh, but it does come with a disclaimer. Uh, on the next slide, I'll essentially saying that, that I'll be making some forward-looking statements uh, so please uh, take that into consideration. Next slide, please. So QX Resources is focused on lithium brines. And just last week, we announced a major project. That's mainly what I'm going to be talking about. We also have lithium hard rock exploration projects in Western Australia in a prime location in the Pilbara. There's a private company called Bayrock, and we own nearly 40% of that. It has nickel, copper, cobalt projects in Sweden. And the reason it's there is because the EU is trying to drive the same thing as the US is, generate uh, battery minerals production within the EU, the same as in the US, and then separately some copper gold assets in, uh, in Queensland. Uh, the company itself, uh, next slide please, the company itself has a market value of about 20 million. And we have quite an experienced board uh, myself, I'm the managing director. Our chairman is uh, has been in broking for more than 30 years. Roger is a very well experienced uh, technical person, a geologist. Dan is a company secretary or a chairman with a number of different companies, and Ben Jarvis working on investor relations. So it's a good broad swath of experiences, and uh, it's important. Um, we talk about it a lot, but this is one of the few smaller companies I've seen with that sort of breadth of experience. Um, Next slide, please. And the company itself has a market value of about 21, 22, 23 million Australian, uh, depending on the day. Um, shares on issue, uh, 900 million. At the end of June, we had a cash position of 1.8 million. We've just done a capital raising. And as soon as those funds come in uh, on Monday, then I'll be able to update this. But uh, that was uh, 3 million Aussie before costs. And, uh, and we're basically trading at the bottom of the share price range for the last year. Um, however, I think on the back of this uh, new transaction, there's plenty of upside. Next slide, please. So this is really what I want to talk about. The beauty of lithium brines is that they are large. They've got scale. And that's why there continues to be interest in them in South America. I spent quite some time looking for a South American type project but in the US. And why in the US? It's because the US is pumping money towards the battery mineral sector. It, a lot of that money has gone into building battery plants, anode cathode plants, assisting with, um, with car makers, but there's still not that much in the way of raw material supply, and they really want it within the continental US. This project here We'll see how it pans out, but this project here is an absolute lookalike for the sorts of things that I've worked on in the past in South America, and it's also very similar to the operating lithium brine project called Silver Peak, uh, belonging to the major Albemarle, which is just across the border in Nevada. This one's in California. It's a large project, um, uh, 10,000 hectares, 102 square kilometres, 25,000 acres, however uh, metric you want to use. But to give you an idea, that's two times the size of Sydney Harbour, half the size of San Francisco City, so a significant size. And it also is well located with good infrastructure. Unlike a number of the South American projects, we have to put all that in. Most of that is already here or very close by. Next slide, please. 
And so why do I think this particular project out of the many that I've looked at here in the Western US can actually work? First of all, when you're looking for lithium brine projects, you want to see a large enclosed basin so that when the water concentrates, water evaporates over time, whether you've got a salt lake at surface or there used to be one there some time back, you then don't want that water to escape anywhere. So you have a closed basin that's large, a reasonable width, quite long, um, and the property we have here covers all the lowest part of the basin. So that's the first thing you want to look for. The next thing is, is there some lithium in the system? This anomaly here extends over 10 kilometres. Some good numbers, between 50 and 200 milligrams per litre or PPM lithium. Some of the projects I've looked at might have 50 at surface. Some of them might have 800. It just tells you there's lithium in the system. You really have to see what it's in the aquifer. And why do we think there's aquifers here? On the right-hand side of this slide, you'll see these pink horizons. This is a type of geophysics that looks below the surface, and you want to find a horizon where it's conductive. That tells you there's brines there, and, uh, and hopefully that'll have lithium. Next slide. And so uh, the image here essentially looks at the target that they're going to be drilling. I'm hoping in the next few days I'll be able to uh, come out and say exactly when we'll be able to drill, but it will be soon. And essentially you want to drill from the surface down through the sediments and find a horizon or a series of horizons that's a sand ridge that have these brines in them. And those brines, it's just a salty water, also carries lithium. We're quite confident because we had that anomaly at surface. We're also seeing lithium bubbling up to the surface along a, a range front fault. So it's got all the settings, the South American one, but here in the US. Next slide, please. And the great thing about the US is unlike even just before COVID, I was uh, in New York one time at a Bloomberg conference and there was hardly any of what you can see in this slide. In those last few years, the US has just been putting money towards it. The car makers have been putting money towards it. The battery makers have been putting money towards it. And so along the East Coast, um, through the Southern states, on the West Coast, it's now not just Tesla. There's a whole raft of, uh, of companies and they need supply. Next slide, please. But it's all very well to find something. You've got to make certain that if you found something, you could actually get it permitted. And uh, quite often, California is known for the word no. Uh, tell me what the question was. However, they're very supportive when it comes to things like renewable energy, solar, um, and they desperately want to help out with the whole mineral, um, sorry, the battery mineral supply chain. And uh, there's a picture of, um, of the governor, um, very well-known Democrat, and yet he was down at the opening of a, uh, of a major geothermal project, which also has lithium, down at the bottom, um, you see a project which has been running now for 150 years using salt evaporation works. This is less than 40 kilometres away from uh, from the project. We've got sealed roads, uh, the right sort of attitude. I can't guarantee that it'll get permitted, but uh, certainly the hallmarks are there, uh, that this is one place where we can access the water and actually move forward. Next slide, please. And, and uh, so we announced last week the terms of the transaction. Essentially, we're going to earn 75% of this uh, project. We're going to spend uh, 2 million US dollars over 27 months paying option payments in five tranches, excuse me, five tranches to the owner. And we're going to drill this project, uh, Liberty Lithium, starting soon as possible. And if things pan out well, I think uh, it'll really turn into uh, a major project. Next slide, please. So what are we going to be doing from here? Well, as I mentioned, um, somewhere between in sort of a week or 10 days time or alternatively four weeks time, we'll be drilling. Um, I'm just closing off those conversations now and expect to, to sign something quite soon. We get the drill rig on site where we've got uh, two holes to start with that are permitted. We aim to intersect aquifers at depth and then we'll uh, sample those, get that material back and uh, aim to get an initial resource by the middle of next year. So that's that's the key approach. Um, just on the next two slides, I'm going to talk briefly about our, uh, our other project, um, which is a series of hard rock lithium projects in the Pilbara. This is really the prime location globally to find a pegmatite and then get it developed. Um, 
We've got a number of projects here. You see down in the bottom corner, Yule River, Western Shore. We recently announced some pegmatites there. If we go on to the next slide, I'll show you a photo of what some of those look like. Big crystals, the right sort of things. Uh, our next door neighbor has um, has uh, announced some pegmatites. So we're fairly excited about that. I'll have some results quite soon, and I hope to share more about it quite soon. Next slide, please. And so in summary, a battery minerals portfolio, projects with scale, and most importantly, tier one locations, and you can expect a lot of news flow over the coming months. Thanks so much. Thanks, uh, Steve. So just a couple of things. Obviously, uh, you, you successfully uh, raised some money uh, recently. Uh, no easy uh, feat in this type of market. Now, it sounds like you know the focus of that money is going on to the drilling campaign at Libsy Lithium. Will be some of the funds go to some of your other projects? Yes. Yeah, so the focus is to get at least these first two holes drilled in the US, uh, demonstrate there's something there, and with the aim then to move on to another four or five holes um, early next year. With the hard rock projects, I'm just waiting on some results to come out in the next um, in the next two or three weeks, and then we'll be back in the field to follow up with some of those outcropping pegmatites. As I mentioned, we had our next door neighbors announce some results, and um, uh, the idea is to uh, clearly identify those and actually get in and do some trenching rather than drilling it straight away. We want to get some bulk samples out of them before we move on to the next thing. That's really the key focus of the funds. Okay, and in addition to the uh, the, the money you raise, uh, you also uh, announce uh, an ATM facility. And I bring this up because they're, you know, they're common practice in the US, but not so much in, in, in Australia. Probably a good opportunity maybe to walk through uh, uh, today's audience on the on the details of the ATM and what benefits it can bring uh, QX going forward. Yes, certainly. Uh, so you're absolutely right. In the United States, uh, many of the smaller cap funds, particularly in, in technology or in biomed, um, have uh, ATM facilities. Uh, Tesla has a very large one. They're less common here in Australia, but they work exactly the same. Essentially, you set them up, um, you put some shares aside as collateral, and then they pretty much sit there and do nothing. There's no, there's no need to use the facility. There's no debt hanging over your head. And if there's a period of time where there's increased liquidity in the stock, you've had some good news, or the sector goes a bit of a run, then you can just turn it on for uh, you know a week, a few weeks, and uh, nobody really knows much about it until you come out and say, oh, by the way, we've got another million, two million, three million dollars here in the can. Uh, I I think they're they're excellent, and um, you don't have the issues of uh, sort of the stock being sold down because of an expectation of a capital raise, and it just keeps uh, the whole. A process going and even add some liquidity to the market when there is liquidity. So I look uh, in my last shop, I found it worked very well. And uh, that's why I was keen to get one here too. I do. And Steve, more of a general question here. You also have a strong background uh, with regards to uh, DLE technology. And it's been well documented recently that you know the oil and gas industry is now eyeing up lithium extraction uh, with the implementation of DLO, DLE tech. How do you see this developing over the coming years? And could it have a material impact on spot bean producers going forward? That's very interesting. Um, so the, the two main deposits that are known about now are lithium hard rock projects. And most of your listeners are very uh, are familiar with those, particularly from Western Australia. Now we're finding some in, in Canada. And then the other one being the lithium brine deposits, which are best known in Chile and Argentina. And as you heard me, I'm trying to get one up and running in the Western US. Um, however, there are, uh, particularly in, uh, in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, there is a sequence about, I can't remember the depth, but it's about 6,000 feet deep, where you've got a, a um, an old horizon uh, with... Um, uh, which had evaporite deposits in it, including lithium. And so when the companies have drilled through them to get to the oil and gas field, particularly in the in the Permian shales, then they have to pump all this water out, all this salty water, and some of that salty brine has a small amount of lithium in it. You know, it might be 50 ppm, it might be 100 ppm. Um, and so there's been some work for quite some time uh, to work out how to extract that lithium and even if it's a zero uh, cost, at least there's some lithium production. Now we're starting to see Exxon move into that space, 
So it may change. Oil and, gas, oil and gas companies naturally are quite familiar with that overall setting. And if they had to drill more wells, they would have the capital to be able to do it. When you're a junior explorer, unless those wells are there, it's a very high cost op, uh, thing to then go and drill deep wells and try to get them pumping out brines. But uh, we anticipate it's going to add to the future. Um, the key thing is, despite some of the negative press, we're still way short on battery mineral supply across the board, and particularly lithium. Steve, absolute pleasure having you today, and we were, we'll look for those uh, or the drilling to start and hopefully get some results by the end of the year. Thanks for your time today. Uh, thank you so much, and, and thanks to all the listeners. Cheers for now.